we are back and live again. Um, hey, everyone, it's Zero Shot Demo. Today we have uh, Justin from Helicone, and we also have another host, Jason Ku, today. Um, Zero Shot Demo is brought to you by Zero Shot News, uh, a bite-sized weekly newsletter that provides uh, information on all things uh, AI. Um, and for our demos, we want to just highlight different tools that are powering, uh, powered by GPT um, or making uh, it easier to work with uh, GPT. So super excited to have you, Justin. Um, want to hear all about Helicone and how it's making the operational back end of GPT easier for everyone. Yeah, thanks, Megan. Talk oh. about Helicone. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> No, I was just saying thanks for having me. I'm, I'm super excited to be here and talk about Helicon and uh, talk about what it enables for uh, GPT-3 developers and LM developers alike. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, let's dive in and get started. Absolutely. Um, all right. So I, you want to just run through the demo right now? Yeah. Do you want to just like tell us a little bit high level what Helicon is and then show us how it works? Because I'm sure we're going to have questions as, uh, Absolutely. as we go through. Absolutely. So... Helicone is an open source observability platform for GP3 applications. What that means is that if you are making a GP3 application or actually now a GPT-4 or a GPT GPT um, application, we now support those. We got to actually change our verbiage on, on the front page here. Um, but you can basically plug us in with one line of code and then you can easily uh, track like your requests, your user metrics, your costs, um, and things that you'd like normally want to track that like OpenAI doesn't provide you, uh, you can go ahead and um, just like go sign into the dashboard and see everything. Um, so we're really targeting uh, right now. Like a lot of people are, that are using us are like um, companies that uh, have or like like Gen AI companies that like their main product is like some uh, GPT three app or like chatbot or something. Uh, but we also have other um, companies as well that are using us that just have like some. Uh, random GPT-3 feature. So whether or not you're like just experimenting or like if it, as long as you're um, as long as you're just like curious, like, hey, what are my requests that have actually been sent? And I want some more visibility into that. You can go to Helicon and check us out. Yeah, um, cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the demo uh, unless uh, Megan or Jason has any other questions. Um, Okay. No, I'm excited. Let's let's see it. Let's see it. All right. So for this demo, I'm going to be using an app that I made called Dream Submarine. So the idea behind Dream Submarine is that it's a choose your own adventure game. You take you like tell it a story or like some place. You say like Harry Potter, um, and then when uh, so basically what's happening right now is it's calling OpenAI, doing some completion, and then uh, you can like uh, choose your own adventure. It gives you like some suggested options. So this dumps you in the world of Harry Potter. It says you're walking through the gates of Hogwarts, um, feeling an anticipation of excitement, da 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 Make, like, what do you want to do next? You can uh, head over to the professor Snape's classroom. Um, and right now, I, I don't, like, let's say I, I push this to prod. Like, here's the uh, prod one. You can go check it out. Um, but I don't know what my users are actually doing. Uh, and typically what I would do right now is I would, like, go and implement Mixpanel, or I'd go have to, like, uh, maybe do Datadog or maybe do like a segment upload, uh, which is like a lot of work. Uh, so what we have is um, basically a, a much simpler solution to do this, um, which I'm going to show you today. So if you go to our Helicone, you can sign up. Um, I'm just going to use one of my emails that I haven't used before. Nice. Um, and then it's going to tell you, uh, it's just going to walk you through this onboarding process. Uh, and this uh, onboarding process takes like two seconds. So here's our code base. Uh, you can see that uh, here's the actual LLM call. Uh, and if we look at the documentation side by side, what it's asking for is, uh, let me just close these things. What it's asking for is basically just take take this, uh, uh, basically change your uh, base URL to the uh, hconeai.com instead of the uh, api.openai. Uh, and then if you're using Python, uh, Node.js or whatever, it's, it's fairly simple. Um, so for Python, you just do this. Uh, Node, you do this. Or we also have support for Go and the Ruby packages as well, um, and probably other ones. Uh, 
we haven't checked them all, but <laughs> um, it's, it's a fairly simple integration. So we change that URL. I'm going to save, uh, and then I click next here, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, add my API key to um, to Helicon. Uh, and one thing I want to note here uh, is that when we go and add our API key, we're never actually storing the API key within Helicon. What we do, and you're going to see this in a second, when I uh, we actually generate this hash. So this hash right here is um, basically it's a, it's a cryptographic one way hash of the API key, um, and uh, we this is what we use to compare uh, within our proxy. We compare this hash to what we're receiving on uh, like this this proxy request, and that's how we actually track your um, your logs. So let's just do a dream submarine, and then we're gonna add the hash key. Okay, so we click next. All right, we're listening for the first uh, event. Now, if we go back to our app, refresh, maybe we'll try let's try Pokemon this time run that. So right now you're pretty much generating requests to power whatever dashboard is going to come up or whatever. Exactly. OK. That's exactly right. So we go here. Um, looks like we received our event. We can go to our dashboard now. Uh, and now we, we're immediately integrated. So now we can see our total request. We can go over. Response. Uh, we can actually view the uh, raw request if we want to. Um, we just check our docs, uh, check user metrics. Um, you can easily just like add an extra line of code to just track users, and then you'll see it here. Um, and that's kind of it at a high level. Let me sign into another account that has a bit more data so it's a bit more interesting um, while you're doing that there's a question about um, yeah like what apps have the highest user retention like are you able to kind of see that through this platform as well or no uh, it uh, we, we're not tracking retention but but that is fascinating. We could totally add that. Um, and one thing that I want to uh, encourage as well is we we are open source. So if you go to our landing page, there's, there's a link to our, our GitHub repo. Um, but it's also right here. Um, and we have these uh, these discussion threads that we'd love to um, like talk about things like this. Actually, we uh, there's actually one about doing uh, more with the user ID, right? So actually, why? What I'm going to say is like how how about retention? Uh, Attention, a suggestion from. Yeah, uh, Chris, who just asked Chris. to, does it show retention by user? Because I think that would be really interesting to see who not only is just using a lot of your um, with tokens, and, <laughs> but also um, like who's really using your product. Uh, yeah, actually, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, more usage. Um, uh, this kind of, we're breaking down by like user ID. Uh, and you can see like this user has cost us like some amount of money. Like this user cost us like 15 cents, for example. Um, yeah, hopefully that uh, that helps. Uh, definitely, user retention is is something that we would love to love to track and love to add within our roadmap. Yeah. So. I mean, it sounds like it's pretty. I mean, so you're able to see the volume, right? So therefore, you you're able to see like probably the heaviest hitters uh, as far as the user goes on the app. Right. Um, but. Yeah. And then, are you so? What if you have multiple apps? Is are you able to combine all of your your applications in this uh, one dashboard? Absolutely. So within this dashboard, uh, you can see here, I actually have a handful of apps. So this one's actually the prod uh, Dream Submarine uh, within like the last, uh, you can see the last three months. Um, and uh, basically we do it by API key. But another thing that uh, we added as well is we added this ability to have custom properties. So if we go to the docs, you can see custom properties and you can say like, hey, Helicone property app mobile. 
Um, and then if you go to filters, uh, we can filter by property. Uh, hello. Like, I think I, I have like some, some dummy properties here. Hello world save. Uh, and then I guess I don't, I didn't make any requests in the last very much with that property, but yeah, you kind of get the idea. <laughs> Are you able to compare the apps too, or is it you look at one at a time? So you look at one at a time. Um, okay. Definitely comparing like AB, uh, like we, we want to add comparing, especially for model comparisons. Like, hey, I have this fine tune model and then I have this other fine tune model. I want to compare these two. That's something that a couple of users have been asking for. Got it. Yeah. And then I think you mentioned earlier uh, when we were talking before we went live, you said there's something about being able to have um, user level, like controls or limitations. Is that, is that yeah. you right? Okay. Yeah, this is something that we're actively working on right now, which is like the ability to um, basically, since we are tracking your users, um, we can track like what your user are requesting and what their volume is like per hour. And then we can limit them to say, hey, uh, I don't want any user to request more than a hundred per hour. Um, and you actually see this uh, chat, uh, sorry, you see this with GBD4 where you can only request like 400 per hour. Yeah. Uh, th so that's not something we have currently, but it's something we're, we're actually working on right now. Um, yeah. Got it. Uh, sorry, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, like looking that. at this away. Okay, I'm looking at the columns. I'm like, all right, so you can see too exactly what the response is as well, like what yeah pretty much what they're asking your app to do <laughs> yeah it's it's super it's super fun uh let me see if i can find let me see if i can find one yeah for like chat gpt uh we like format it nicely this is like really bad test data so maybe this isn't like the best example uh but for chat gpt we actually like format the the text so that it's like uh like looks like a chat for you for example we're, we're really trying to like nail like this like visualization aspect or like this like tracking aspect that like um uh should just be available got it got it yeah um want to make sure we have time for questions i know we collect some um throughout the week for from the community as well jason do you want to um take it away with some q a yes yeah and i'll pull on some threads that justin had mentioned so justin you had said that you know oh can you hear me okay yeah i hear you Okay, perfect. Uh, you mentioned uh, GPT-4. So, uh, you know, it was just announced yesterday. Uh, is, is Helicon already using uh, GPT-4 or capable of, of, of working with GPT-4? It's it's absolutely capable of working with GPT-4. Uh, the GPT-4 API hasn't been announced yet. So like hasn't been widely available yet. Uh, so once that gets mm -hmm. available, we'll be merging uh, updates uh, to support that, like support um, like cost calculation and stuff like that. I think... Uh, one of the unique things about GPT-4 is since it is super expensive, it, uh, I think it uh, users are going to get a lot of value out of Helicon because uh, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be very expensive to run GPT-4. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the uh, tech stack that you went with to, to build Helicon? Absolutely. So we are using uh, Cloudflare workers for our proxy so that we don't add, like we the latency we add is like super negligible compared to the completion time. Um, and the Cloudflare workers basically uh, proxy the request and then hold the worker open and then log that request back up to uh, Subbase, which is what we're using for our database. Uh, Subbase is just like an easy way to deploy Postgres. Uh, we're huge Postgres fans um, and that's what we use. Uh, and then as far as like the front end and everything else like that, we're just using classic Next.js and Vercel deployments. Yeah. Nice. For for other developers looking to you know deploy their own stuff, um, is there right. uh, is there any recommendations you give? Like you know why did you go with Superbase and, and some of the, the tech options that you did? Absolutely. So we went with um, we went with Superbase mainly because uh, they were easy to use. One, uh, two, it's SQL. Um, so that like when you're dealing with like large volumes of data, it's easier to uh, aggregate them. And then three, they're also fully open source, and we're an open source product, and we want to uh, make sure that our uh, tech stack blends well to open source users so that if they wanted to deploy within their own infrastructure, so that they're not locked in. They don't have any vendor lock in from anybody. Nice. Uh, I think Chris asked a, a nice, uh, a very technical question here. He asked, uh, what is nice. the latency added versus the raw query? Yeah, uh, so we actually have a, a small piece in our docs about this. Um, 
where the latency added is like super negligible. We we did uh, a long series of tests where we literally couldn't find uh, any noticeable difference. Uh, it's way less than one percent even, um, and and we get that benefit because we're we're on Cloudflare workers and Cloudflare workers are deployed on the edge. So wherever your request is in the world, um, you'll be getting like the highest performance. Yeah. Nice and. Uh... Uh, kind of uh, touching on on the name Helicon, we we talked a little bit behind the scenes, like uh, the you know, what the original project name was. Uh, right. Can you take the audience on kind of a journey on that 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 uh, naming? Uh, uh, sure. Journey? So we named we named our company uh, Valor, and we we fell in the trap of hey, switch the last vowel to something that looks cool. Uh, <laughs> and so it was like V A L Y R, which made it very hard to. Um, search for and like our SEO was bad. And like, anytime we told anyone the company, uh, it was like, oh, this is how you spell it. And it made it very hard to look up. Luckily for Helicone, when you tell people Helicone, people know how to spell it almost immediately. Uh, it's it's actually like, uh, it's, it's a real thing. It's like this like helix that uh, is in the shape of a cone, kind of a cool thing, but that's actually not where it came from. It came from my co-founder, my co-founder's girlfriend, uh, was like, hey, the Heliconia flower is really cool, which is like this flower that looks like a lobster. Um, and then... Uh... Oh, no, oh no, he's back. He's back. Okay. Wait, we we missed the, like, the last part of that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, did I freeze? I'm sorry. Uh, basically, um, yeah, Heliconia flower. It looks like a lobster. Uh, and that's what we ended up with. Uh, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. All yeah. Right. Did, I it's, named after a, it's named after a lobster. <laughs> named <laughs> after a flower. That looks like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. Very cool. Um, do we have time for one more question? Or um, I'm free. Yeah. Wrap her up. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Was what? Waiting to see if. Oh no! Go ahead. I know. Sorry. I will wait to see if Chris says no. Right? No. Um, um, last question I have for you: What's been the hardest part of, of working on Helicom so far? Yeah, uh, it, it's it's a handful of things. I think the the hardest part for for me is just um, keeping uh, keeping up to date with all the feature requests and keeping up to date with how how quickly the space is moving. Um, it's a lot. And one of the things that uh, I'm happy with Helicon and where we're positioned is like, we're very uh, focused on observability right now. Uh, so it's not, uh, we're not too fragmented and, and split apart. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's the question here? Sorry. This last one, this last it, one, it's your, yeah, your favorite two other AI companies that you think are cool and that most people don't know about. That's, that's a that's, that's a <laughs> that's a hard question. Um, I would say maybe hmm, you're really putting me on the spot here. Be <laughs> careful, because like a lot of these AI companies are my friends. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to like pick. <laughs> uh, uh, I I I think. Um, one of the one of the early ones that I really liked uh, when like before before the hype kind of came around in like uh, November or so was this company called Explain Paper. Uh, they're like close friends of mine, um, and it's really fun. You just drop drag and drop a, a PDF, uh, and maybe some of you guys know about it, maybe not. Uh, you just like kind of put a PDF in there, and then you can like explain that piece of paper, like explain the uh, paper, and have like a chatbot against it and stuff. And I thought that was like, a really really cool use case. I remember Explain Paper. They were one of the first ones that I found when I was doing research on on uh, GPC. So definitely nice. a really cool, cool app. Um, Justin, thank you so much for, for joining so much. us. Super yeah, excited to here. dive into Helicon and uh, give it a try because uh, I need it. <laughs> yeah, so, please. That'd be, I would love it if you tried it. Uh, let me know if um, you need any help. How, before you go, how can people find you? How can they get access to Helicone? Like all the good stuff. Very easy. Go to helicone.ai, join our Discord and message and I'll answer. Uh, and then also uh, you can try it for free. Uh, you can also check out the repo. Every, everything's here. If you just go to uh, our homepage, um, 
like you have GitHub, uh, you have our Discord, and there you go. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye.